everyone and welcome to Technique Week Stenciling. I'm here to teach you everything I know about stenciling this week. If you joined me last month for watercoloring, thank you so much for joining me again for a second time. And if you're new to my Technique Week videos, be sure to check out the watercolor series there in the corner. It was a really great series with lots of free downloads over on my blog. Now stencils have been around for ages. Stencils we can probably remember using as far back as going back to kindergarten and tracing our first letters. But stencils can be a lot more exciting when using card making. Now for a long time I think they were considered more out of style, but now that it's come back, it's made a full comeback stenciling, it's used so much in clean and simple cards to add texture, it provides another layer without adding any bulk to your card, and also there's so many beautiful gorgeous stencils out there now that you really can't resist. But as with any supply, there are so many techniques that can go with them than what you would just use them for. Now the most common way to use stencils would be to use ink with stencils. But before we move on to the different techniques that I'm going to show you throughout the week, I wanted to show you a couple of my stencils and a couple of the different types that there are on the market. I do not have any metal stencils from Dreamweaver. I know there are metal stencils available, but unfortunately they're a little too expensive for my budget. But there are metal stencils out there. One of the first ones are the Tim Holtz stencils. Tim Holtz stencils tend to be extremely detailed and they come in this tag size. Because Tim works a lot of the times with tags, these are perfect for tag making, but they also work really well for cards as well because it's not too often that we actually stencil an entire card or an entire card panel. So these do work extremely well and you could also use them just placing them different parts on your art journal, on your cards, or wherever, to add a little bit here and there. There are also mini stencils coming out in, I believe, packs of three, as well as individually, um, from Tim Holtz that he announced at CHA, but they're not just available quite yet. Another type you might get is a partial stencil, or a really small stencil. These are used exactly like other stencils, however, they are a lot smaller. This one here is from Create a Smile Stamps and came in one of their card kits, or their kits. Another brand of stencils I just picked up and I'm enjoying are Clarity stencils. I'm going to talk a lot more about the Clarity brand and different things that they have. Um, these are a little bit bigger. They're 7x7 seven seven stencils, so they're really great for art journaling. They're also really great for card making and could even be used on scrapbooks. They often provide background stencils as well as very intricate stencils. Now there are many different brands out there. For example, I personally really, really like um, this brand here. And this brand is called the Crafters Workshop. I never remember what it's called. But um, they have lots of really fun stencils. I also enjoy My Favorite Things stencils, Simon Says Stamp stencils, and Create a Smile. My personal favorite stencils are from Create a Smile because they're extremely detailed and very useful stencils. I find that you, there are so many loads of stencils out there with images and different things like that. And you don't need them all, obviously, and it just depends on what you like to do. So I'm going to show you right now my 10 favorite stencils. Now, as many of you know, I'm quite minimalist in my crafting, so I don't like to have a ton of stencils, and I don't need every single image that's available out there, but I thought I'd show you my top 10 and why I've chosen them as my favorites. I personally use backgrounds the most, so you'll see that most of them are backgrounds. My first one is from um, Heidi Swap, and this one here I picked up at Michael's on sale a while ago, and it was quite inexpensive. I love the fact that it's hexagons, but it also masks off a layer of hexagons already for you. Creates really great images. I've used it a ton of times, and here is one video where I've used it before that you can check out if you'd like. Number two, now these are in no particular order, is this one here from My Favorite Things. It's called Concentrated Circle. I really like these, but I tend to just use half of it. I really like them to create sort of a really cool skyline, something behind a die cut skyline or a semicircle is always really cool. Next up, I have this one here is not so much a background stencil, but I really like these splotches and coffee stains and things like that. They're really great for mixed media and grunge look. 
Another image one that I've truly enjoyed is this one here. I'll link to it below. I'm not 100% sure on the name of it right now. But there are two butterflies as well as the wings that are, can be used as a detail so you can use more than one color with them. I truly adore this brick from My Favorite Things. I've used it in a ton of cards. I'll show you one up here that I used on a Halloween card. And I absolutely think this is gorgeous and can fit really so many occasions. I absolutely adore Christmas cards as well as you know um, here I'll link to my series there on my 12 days of Christmas. So two of my stencils here were my favorites. This one here provides a really nice snow look. I like how it starts really heavy at the top and works its way down. This one's from My Favorite Things. This one here was from Create a Smile Stamps. Unfortunately, it is no longer available because it was available in one of their kits. Um, but these have just gorgeous snowflakes, and they also came with a die cut that was the same, which ended up making it really, really pretty. I would say one of the most common things to use in stenciling is simply a dot sten uh, stencil. So you can get them in different sizes and things like that. I would recommend a medium-sized dot like this one as well as a small one. That was from Simon Says Stamp, I believe. And this one here is from Create a Smile Stamps. I absolutely love it because it has a lot of circles and creates such a fun pattern. You can use the pattern in so many different ways depending on how you turn the stencil and you can get what you want out of it. I personally do not like to do my entire card with this. It's a little bit much, but masking off a certain area would be gorgeous. And lastly, I have this card here, or this stencil here. This one is called Abstract. It's from My Favorite Things. Absolutely adore it, and I'll link to a card that I've done up above with the Abstract stencil. Now that we've looked at the top 10 things, I just wanted to talk about some of the things we're going to be exploring this week. Now we're going to be exploring, of course, the most traditional use, and that's using them with inks. So stencils with inking, you would need a blending tool for to blend the ink into the, surf, into the card. There are, is another way to blend inks into a card, and that's using these really awesome brushes. And these are from Clarity Stamp. They also were responsible for creating these 7x7 seven seven stamps that I, or stencils that I showed earlier. I just recently started using these, and I'm really happy with them. They're really, really exciting. And they are available for pre-order at So Suzy Stamps, and I will link to that below. Another thing you can use um, stencils for is with misting. So you can mist over your card using any type of mist. And lastly, one of the techniques we're going to be looking at is texture paste. So I have translucent and white texture paste, as well as a palette knife to spread it out over my stencil to add texture to your project without adding a lot of bulk. One other thing I wanted to mention is that I really like to mask off stencils. So it's a really good idea if you're following along with this class to have some sort of masking tape. I like to use 3M post-it tape myself just to mask off certain areas. You can also use other things. Another thing I found extremely useful is a roll of masking tape or this one here is actually stenciling tape. Now stenciling tape is just slightly different than masking tape in the sense that it's not as sticky. It's actually I don't know, you'll see that it, it's actually not sticky at all. But it just holds down your stencil enough, has enough stick to hold it down for the one-time use, and then you can easily peel it up without anything happening to your project or it ripping. So I can't wait for you all to join me. I hope you enjoyed the introduction to stenciling. We'll be looking at all four of these techniques until Friday, and I'll give you a chance to play along over at my blog over the next two weeks if you'd like to try any of these techniques out to share. Thank you so much for watching, everyone, and I enjoy having class with you and providing free downloads every day this week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching until the end of the video. You can click up at the top to visit my blog and the supply list. Over on the right hand side, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, or you can click on the watercolor picture to check out my class that I had last month. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll catch you tomorrow for day one.